Good morning everybody. So, today we're going to do part four of our ride through the Lee Valley Regional Park. Now as you'll recall at the end of part three we got as far as the Walthamstow wetlands and I've just passed that this morning and of course it doesn't open until half past ten. Now as I said yesterday I'm going to get out and about early this morning which I have done. It would be a bit pointless waiting till half past ten to get into the Walthamstow wetlands. So we'll have a look at that on the way back. So you'll see that at the end of this video. In the meantime, I'm now making my way around one of the large reservoirs that we have here in Walthamstow and trying to get back towards the canal so we can head south towards, ooh, let's head off towards the Olympic Park and West Ham. So as soon as we get round that reservoir, I'm back onto the Route 1 on the National Cycle Network. Back along the side of the canal. The amazing thing about the regional park is that despite now being well inside Greater London, we've still got these large expanses. This one's Tottenham Marsh. It's not much of a marsh anymore, it's more of a grassy field. Much of Tottenham Marsh is now as much as two or three metres higher than it was back in the 1940s and 50s because they decided to use it as a refuse tip and uh, loaded it up with lots of garbage. I still have some friends on the allotment who I talk to who can remember this being an open landfill site. And unfortunately then when it closed, the height of the land had been changed such that it's not really a marsh anymore. But there we go. At least nature's taken back over. It's fairly cool this morning. It's quite nice. I've got a nice cool breeze in my face. I dare say it's going to warm up later. I think it's supposed to get to about 18, 20 degrees later this afternoon. So we're not far from the canal, the canal's just behind those trees over there. It's only about 50 metres away from me. As you can see, the large buildings that are going up shows that we really are getting into proper Greater London. And then before long we find ourselves back on the canal. Again, the canal still forms part of the regional park, but there's just not a lot either side of it. On the left-hand bank, just beyond those trees that are now coming up on the left, there's more reservoirs and part of the wetlands that we'll ride through later. The wetlands are open to cyclists, but the Route 1 is what I'm on now carries on along the side of the canal all the way down to Bow.
this piece of path here just last year was all potholes and horrible. Really nasty, just a muddy trench. It's really quite nice now though. That looks like hard work to me. Balancing and paddling at the same time. Nah. Some of the old wharf cranes still in place. None of them used anymore because it's all housing now. Must have been something that Cedo was working in the day. It's a very nice part of the river. I keep interchanging between river and canal, it's because it is the river, it's the River Lee, but it's been canalised the same as much of it. And then in places where they've cut the corners off, you do actually get to see just the river and not so much of the canal. There's that lovely view we've seen before. So there on my right we have Springfield Park, just one of the many parks in this part of London. And still on the left, just through these bushes, we've got the, the river. And opposite Springfield Park, on the opposite side of the canal, is Springfield Marina. But again, that's just one of the private marinas, there's nothing really for us to see there where people keep their boats stored and in dry dock during the winter. So on the opposite bank there we have Leighton Marsh. You've seen me riding along there several times before. Doesn't the canal look lovely at this time of the morning? All still. Of course, as I mentioned before, most of the boats when you get this close to London are liverboards. So they're permanent residences of people. When you compare the prices, a flat in that block over there would quite easily be somewhere in the region of half a million pounds for a one or two bedroom flat, compared to the cost of a boat, which can be just five, ten thousand pounds, up to fifty, a hundred thousand pounds. So you can see why people decide to live in boats. Of course, the closer we get to central London, the higher those costs of living are, and the higher the housing costs are, and the more sensible it gets to be living in a boat on a canal, I suppose. I've changed my mind. Let's go this way. into the borough of Waltham Forest. Another one of our sporting venues for the Lee Valley Park is the Lee Valley Ice Centre. I've shown you that one in a vlog before.
how many cyclists have been past here today. 115 today, not bad for half past eight in the morning. And the yearly figure, we're now, what, 16th of May? The yearly figure was 131,000 bikes. I don't know how many that is per day. Somebody can work it out, I'm not going to. And then we have the Lee Valley Riding Centre. Another one of the sports along the park. Poor old horses, they're probably not getting much exercise at the moment, are they? They're happy enough out in the field, I suppose. And as we come away from the riding school, there's a nice little route straight back onto the Route 1. And as we cross over the river once more, we come out onto this site which you've seen a few times before on my vlogs, I think. This is Hackney Fields. It was Hackney Marshes, but as you can see now it's just fields. Fields full of football pictures. I've absolutely no idea how many football pictures there are on there. But on an ordinary Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning, each of those pictures has multiple teams playing on it. And the place is heaving. To all of you watching in North America, I'm talking about soccer, not football. And just to the side of Hackney Fields is this, the Middlesex filter beds. So in the 1800s, London, as with much of Europe, was suffering from outbreaks, repeated outbreaks of cholera. Eventually they discovered that that cholera was coming from the water supply, which at the time was from pumps in the street. People would pump the water out and take it home, use it for drinking water, and as I say, people were getting cholera. So eventually it was decided that something needed to be done to clean up the water, and that's how the Middlesex filter beds were born. These drops next to me are the original filter beds and uh, they have a concrete bottom that's perforated and they would have originally been filled of sand and gravel for the water to filter through from the river. That water was then pumped out from beneath the filter beds into pipes and then sent off to North East London for people to drink. And these filter beds were in use till quite recently when a new water treatment works at the Copper Mill Stream just up the road from here was opened. And we've now got modern technology cleaning the water. But in 1988, the Regional Valley Authority took this site over, they decided not to change any of it, they've just let nature take its course and it's grown back to what you see today, full of trees. This is not the easiest of places to cycle around because it's got lots of drop-offs and trenches and just all the old works that have been left in place for nature to take back over. But just up on this platform in front of me if I can get up there. Yep. So just in the centre here is where the central well was. The water was pumped out of a well here and into the filter beds. And we have the filter beds all, all the way around the outside. It's 
quite an interesting site today because you can still see some of the old metal works all the old sluice gates are still in place and it's just more interesting because nature's taken it all back over the filter beds are sandwiched in between the Hackney Cut off the River Lee. The Hackney Cut is part of the canal system that was made because the River Lee, just at this point, is unnavigable. And just over here in this corner is the weir where the river and the canal split. Let's go around this side and have a look. You hear the water already. So just outside the filter bed, the path split. We have the National Cycle Route 1 that carries along the side of the Hackney Cut, the canalised part of the river, or we have another cycle path that goes up along the side of the river and goes towards the Olympic Park. They both end up at the Olympic Park, but I think you've seen enough of the canal in recent weeks, so let's head up the river. I'm glad I came out early today because there's already a lot of people. Dread to think what this will be like come lunchtime. But it's the weekend, people are all out and about. I can't blame people for keeping healthy, hey? After all, that's what I'm doing. And then, of course, as you've seen on so many of my vlogs, we enter the Olympic Park. So let's go around the Olympic Park and see what we can see. So immediately upon entering from the north end of the Olympic Park, you've got the Lee Valley Hockey and Tennis Centre. So there's some of the tennis courts. One of the hockey pitches behind me. And then there's another three hockey pitches in front of me. And to my left, you can just about make it out there. That's part of the mountain biking off-road track that they used in the 2012 Olympics. Still open for people to have fun on. Unfortunately, it's not wide enough for the trike in many places, so I can't take Trini over that. Probably best that I don't anyhow. That really is built for Olympic level 
off-road riding. I don't think Trini's quite up to that. I don't think I'm quite up to that, actually. <laughs> The mountain bike track forms part of the Lee Valley Velo Park, and of course, the velodrome forms a major part of the Velo Park. But then we have the mountain bike track, we've also got down there the road track. And then round the back of the velodrome here, there's a BMX track. get round to the other side so we can see that. There, we can just see the, the start of the BMX track over there. I'd love to take Trini round that. I'd like to take Trini in the velodrome as well, but I don't think they allow it for insurance purposes, which is a bit of a shame. You have to pay a small fee to go on the road track there. I don't actually know how much it is at the moment. I'll put it on the screen when I find out. But as has become our mantra over the last couple of weeks, it's actually closed, of course, so we can't go on it. Which is a shame. I've not been down this pathway before. I'm sure I'll come to some steps or something at the bottom, which will mean I'll have to turn around and come back, but I'm going to go and have a look anyhow, because it looks quite nice. This is all part of the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. What did I say about steps? <laughs> it's all right, the path continues. I didn't know all this was down here. Watering the grass. I timed that just right, otherwise it'd have got wet because they're watering the path as well. So you see me riding around the Olympic Park quite a lot because riding is tolerated on all the paths around the park which is really, really nice. And it's just a pleasant place to come away from the traffic, to be honest. So I just carried on cycling along that path. And there's a lovely view at the end. It comes up a nice cycle-friendly slope. All the way up there and round. And all very nice and a nice view and then you get to the end and there's a padlock gate. Hmm. Well, it was such a nice view. I'm not even going to bother to lift the trike over the padlock gate, which I could do. It's only a couple of feet high, but I'm going to go back because there's plenty more of the Olympic Park to see. All that over there is now housing and uh, big shopping centre. You can see there's John Lewis there. That's the Westfield Centre at uh, Stratford. Don't know
don't know why they would padlock that gate at the top there. It seems strange. They leave all this footpath open for people to ride along and walk along and then lock the gate at the end. Strange people. Pleasant ride, nevertheless. So just on my right here, that was the Olympians village where all the Olympians stayed in 2012. And uh, obviously that's now all been turned into fa fancy apartments. Not a bad place to live if you can afford it, I suppose, right next to the, to the park here. And fairly close to central London. And that lovely building is the London Aquatic Centre. Was the Olympic swimming pool and diving centre. Fabulous shape building, isn't it? It's actually now massively reduced from the size that it was. During the Olympics it had uh, big seating arenas that went up much, much higher than what the roof does now. Just over from the London Aquatic Centre brings us to a fitting ending place for part four of our journey through the regional park. And that's the West Ham United football ground, the London Stadium. So why do we end part four here at the London Stadium? Well, shortly after the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park, the regional park comes to an end. That is the main part of it ends. It's uh, kind of just stopped. But there's another couple of parts of the regional park, like little islands of the regional park, just south of here, that I'm going to show you in part five. They're worth doing in a park themselves because of the history. So I'm now going to make my way back up to the Walthamstow wetlands, which should be open by the time I get there. Show you those. But that's it from the Queen Elizabeth Olympic Park. So the Walthamstow wetlands is a series of reservoirs that are owned and maintained by Thames Water, our local water authority. But the reservoirs was constructed in the late 19th century, the second half of the 19th century. And much of the building works in here are the Victorian and listed. But a couple of years ago they opened this up, it used to just be a trout fishery. A couple of years ago they got a lottery grant and uh, did up all the buildings and opened it up to the public. That building there is called the Copper Mill. I think the proposal is that it's going to become a museum or education centre at some point but they're still doing work on it at the moment. Look at these little fellas here. getting quite big now, aren't they? So 
So there are five reservoirs within the wetlands. I think there's at least another two or three that are outside of the wetlands as well. But the whole thing covers several hundred acres. As I say, it used to be a trout fishery, as well as a, a bird watching paradise. So I used to be able to come through here. You used to be able to pay a pound at the entrance gate and you used to be able to spend the afternoon in here. Fishermen would have to pay a bit more than that. But as a pedestrian you could pay a pound and come in. And I used to do that quite often. And then unfortunately Thames Water made the not so wise decision to open out to the public generally for free. And now the place is just really, really busy. Which is not good for a nature reserve really, is it? But there we go, we have to share these things I suppose. Personally I would rather have continued paying a pound because just that pound seemed to keep everybody away, which was great. Now I'm not allowed to ride the bike up onto the reservoir walls because it disturbs the birds so I'm going to park Trini here for a second and just go up and have a look at this reservoir. There are footpaths going round each of the reservoirs, but they don't allow cyclists or runners on the top, which is quite good. Gives the birds a bit of peace. This so is the second main building, also Victorian, on the site. Is the one now coming up there with the chimney. It used to be the main pumping house for the reservoirs. Now it's been turned into a rather posh calf and offices for the running of the site, I believe. Or maybe this was the one that was going to be the education centre, I can't recall. But this is the more grand of the buildings. It really does look quite nice, doesn't it? The site itself is split into two. It's split by a main road that goes right through the middle. But Waltham Forest Council have put in a nice pedestrian and cycle crossing to get us between the two sites. And just down there through the trees is the ever-present River Lee. Regular viewers on my channel will have seen me riding around the wetlands many, many times because, as I've shown before, it's literally only a two minute cycle from my house to get down to here. And it's such a lovely place to ride. Well, aren't you brave? I've got nothing for you. 
You're going to jump in my side bag next, I suppose. They get so used to seeing people, very tame. So anyway everyone, that's about it for this part four of our ride through the Lee Valley Regional Park. I'll be calling this one Wetlands to West Ham and as I mentioned earlier there's just a couple of little bits to do there's a couple of little islands of the park down in central London that I want to show you so we're going to do that as a part five of this trip through the park and that'll be the park finished goodness me there's a lot of people in here today But yeah, that's it for today. I'll be back with another vlog tomorrow and then we'll probably finish the regional park at some point during next week when there's a few less people around. I hope you enjoyed this little run from the wetlands down to West Ham. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to click that little thumbs up button if you would. As always, really appreciate that. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Cheers then, guys. Ta-da.